Howdy, Beefalo Bart here, and welcome! Alright, first off, I put all this stuff in the wrong freaking project, so I'm going to spend some time later deleting everything, so I can put it in the right project and do it a little bit differently. But, I wanted to show off some teleports. A simple system, I've covered teleports before, but this is a little bit different. Um, you look, there's text on the floor, and this is just a BSP geometry I made into a static mesh. Um, we can see the text says default on all of them and put a couple little platforms and stuff here and the nature of the teleports themselves like this is a straight default one so the text is going to say default and you can change that here and the teleport destination even though there's zeros in it I've set it to where it defaults to you teleport to the roof of it so come over here and see it still says default so the default one has a little sound effect and um, particle effect. So if you don't change any of those settings, it's just going to default to going to the rooftop until you actually go in there and change it. Um, this one, you can see the text has changed. It says spawn, so it carries you back to your spawn point. Uh, this one carries you to the platform above. Nice. This one will carry to the roof of the one to the left. <laughs> I was just creating some stuff here. And you got this platform here, so if you want to go to that platform, then there you go. So, to create the thing, it's nice and simple. You just need a, um, a static mesh for your teleport, whatever you want. Um, it doesn't have to be anything fancy. I've been known to primarily use this as just a cube, um, scaled down to 0 0.1. It's 1, 1, and 0 0.1, and I tend to use that. I said I was going to use something a little bit different for the um, the actual, um, instead of a box collision, I use the, the sphere collision, because you don't need a whole big gigantic collision here. You just need to be able to intersect it, and I use it as the location for my emitter and sound location. So it is set up to use um, uh, sound attenuations. And to quickly showcase, it does work. All right, this is the client. Uh, I've got the server is on a different monitor. So what we're going to do is I'll take the client, move him back, and that way you can kind of get a look at all of them at one time and the platform up here. Well, that's close enough. So I'll just go over here and I'll do, okay, this is the default one. Step in. You can see the emitter. You can hear the sound only because, you know, it just it's shared. All right, this one goes back to spawn location. Whatever you're facing um, inside the teleporter, there's a delay on it. You could even walk out of it if you wanted to. Um, once you initiate it, it's it's going. I did not put a you know a stop motion in there, but you can see it, it's all working as intended. Could actually cause the player to stop moving if you wanted to. And last one. So no problem with uh, multiplayer. It's working just fine one selected viewport so to get started with it and I'm gonna have to remake all this anyway so I created a, uh, a new blueprint and essentially had to do all kind of funky stuff in here but uh, what I will do is I will cover every bit of it and i um, show you what I did to get this so I created a couple of variables um, I've got the teleport destination of where you're going to have your teleport go to and that I left blank you don't need to put anything on here, but you need to click on this so you can see the eyeball so that it's exposed and you can edit it outside. And then that is actually going to be a vector, and then the destination text. It doesn't matter what it says here. Um, it's going to get changed anyway, no matter what it says. Um, but the destination text, and I'll show you that here in just a moment. Um, even though it says default while you're here, that's because the um, text, well, yeah, 
Um, yeah, you can just put whatever in here. Default. So that's just going to say the, the default. Um, so go back in here. See, they all say default until you actually go in there and it sets the name based on what you told it to be. So just to kind of show really quickly, it doesn't matter where you put it, you can just drag it in the map and it's going to work with a base default of just going onto the rooftop and the text will be default. So, um, yeah, teleport location, transform, um, not using that one. So I can actually get rid of that. Um, default teleport location or destination. I needed to create this so that um, there is a default so that if you do not assign anything, it has somewhere to go. And again, I said you can just grab one, throw it in there. And if you don't give it a teleport location, if you look at it right now, it says 000, which is going to be right back over here. And we don't want it to go to 000. So if I go in there, it gets it and sets its location so that it puts you on top of the other one. Hey, what's happening, brother? So if you forget to, to give it a destination or change the name, it's always going to have something in there. So how I did that was um, with the default teleport destination, the um, which I'll get into that. So on event begin play, what I've done here is, if you look, I've just got my static mesh, which is the teleport booth. You can I made this one out of BSP geometries, but you can use whatever you want. I'm going to be using this in a Cinti Studios project, and I actually have a booth that I can use for that. Um, a teleport platform. That is actually... Um, I don't even think I'm using that anymore. No, um, I actually I, I think I am using that. But the sphere collision, this is what triggers it, and then your text render. So that's what's in there. So all I did was I grabbed a reference to just just drag it off and drop it in here, and you can get a reference to to that. So on my text render, I'm setting using a set text node, and I'm just pumping in the destination text, which is right there. You can see it says default. Um, the text render, you don't really see anything here. Um, you see, I also put this in. This needs to. Well, it doesn't really matter on this one, but I created a new category for these two items so that um, when you look at it here, you can see user input, teleport destination, and destination text. So that it, it has its own little thing right here that you can minimize and close if you wish. So that's all it's doing right here for your text. It's just setting your text render based on the destination text. And you can change that in the map once you've got it placed. Um, the actual static mesh reference, and I'm, actually I was going to use this one and I didn't do it. Um, so I'd probably get rid of that too. Uh, get world location of the actual booth itself. So that we're going to create, what we're doing here is creating the default teleport destination and setting that automatically on event begin play. So to get that, you get a reference to your your teleport booth or your, your location. You get your world location and you run break vector. Just drag off from here and you can actually scroll down and it's right there, break vector. And then X and Y, we're not changing anything at all. Those are going to stay default or whatever they were from this location. And then from the Z, which is the elevation, we're going to add, and that's all I did was I drug out from here and I hit the plus key and just do float plus float. And I'm adding 300, which is going to put me right on top of the location of where I'm at and plugging that back into a make vector node. and then just plug this into the set for your default teleport destination. 
So that's why I did that for the default teleport location. It says, so whenever you just drag one in and you forgot to, to set a destination for it, no matter what, it's going to you know, draw out and use the roof of it as a, a failsafe. You're not going to teleport to some weird location and fall through the map. So if you forget to set that teleport location, you always have somewhere to go. Um, then you grab from your sphere, which is your sphere collision or box collision or whatever else. If you right click on it, go to add event, and it'll be on component begin overlap, and it'll automatically create this node for you. And what we're doing here is we're actually using the sphere location, which is where I'm going to spawn my emitter. So I get world location for that and plug that into spawn emitter at location. I, I'd use the, um, the scale function here and I, I sized it down a little bit because the emitter was too big. So I rescaled it here. Um, but on component begin overlap, I used a cast to character node instead of cast to your current player. So anything or anybody that actually walks into this, as long as they're a character of some sort, it's going to, to function. What I can do is change the game modes and show you that it'll work either way. So it's kind of good that I put it in the wrong location, in the wrong project. And this is just the emitter that I'm using. This was from the Infinity Blades effects, which is free in the marketplace, by the way. I ran a sequence node so I could do a couple different things here. So once I spawn the emitter, it's going to take about three seconds to run. So I ran a sequence node so I can split off and do two things at one time. And one and a half seconds later, I want to play this teleport cue or the sound file. And then two seconds later, I wanted to actually do the teleport. And this is where the funky stuff comes in, but it's not too bad. Is the teleport is actually just going to set the actor location. But to do that, if you forgot to change the, the default TP destination, which is 0000, if you forgot to change it, and it just shows zeros across the board there, what will happen is if your teleport destination is, and to get that, all you have to do is just drag off, and not jack off, drag off, and do equal equal, and it'll be equal vector and you'll get that. We don't really need anything in, on the float here and this is just kinda like a tolerance level here but this you can set it up to be whatever you want but since we're we're defaulting it to zero 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 then that's what we're checking for is if it's a zero 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 meaning you have not changed it. So if your target destination has not been changed then we need to use the default teleport destination so with this branch node here from the teleport destination, if that's equal to zero zero zero, then use the if it is zeros, yes, use the um, the default destination location, which is the three hundred above its current location. So you just end up on the rooftop. If it is not equal to zero zero zero, that means that you have changed it then you use that new location which is the teleport destination which is what you input in externally okay I hope that made sense so using the the teleporter I mean yes I just got them lined up right here but I can grab another teleporter booth and just throw it in right yeah whatever that's fine and yes my OCDs I have to actually put it on a specific point or I will not like it. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So how do you figure the location of where you're going to place your, your teleport to location? Well, plain and simple, you can just wing it, but a little bit easier way to go is um, empty pawn, empty actor, uh, cylinder, any of these uh, the basic things right here and just I'm going to make a platform for my teleport to, and I'm just going to pick a random location and then move it because of my OCDs. I don't, I am just a freaking mess, ain't I? So, not that I'm worried about remembering that, I'll show you another trick on that. 
and I'm going to resize this to 2 by 2 by 0.1 so we have a nice little platform and this is the location there where I want to go to but I'm going to raise it up in here let's go up about a thousand now a trick that I do is whenever I rescale it to this you notice the pivot point is still in the center of it by doing it as 0.1 that works out to be 10 Unreal Engine units so what I can do here is this is where I want to teleport to so I'm going to right click on the transform location Just right click and copy and then I'm gonna move that down by 10 so you don't clip into it when you land there so now if we come back over to our teleporter click on it and we're not worried about this location we want our teleport destination it's gonna right click and paste and there you go we put it in there let's change the name to um, high point whatever so now we go into the game you can see our platform over there it says high point go in here and there we go and there was much rejoicing okay we're done <laughs> yeah, I mean it's an easy system to work with I mean once you've created it um, literally just it takes a couple seconds to set it up drop it on the map where you want it to go get a nice and cool position for it and then put a platform or, or put your location down I mean, you don't even have to have anything here this could be just like okay spawn in the air or spawn wherever you want um, but with these teleports they're super simple like default nothing's been changed it just defaults to there um, this one spawn point I put the text on there but what if you don't want the text you don't want players on oh well, it looks tacky I don't want that there you know they all say default um, you could just not use the text feature in there um, I don't know what would happen if you actually came in here and change that to just say nothing there you go so if you just change it to nothing it'll delete that so no big deal because I was facing that direction let me actually go in here and turn around so again if you want to lock your player in location you just have to remember to unlock them because you're still able to move right here and you can walk out and leave and oops I just screwed up so you can actually do things to lock the player in location um, I should put text back in here far point you would actually have to um, get references to the character movement let's go ahead and save this so in all this you've got um, on component begin overlap it's checking other actors so it's just using the cast to character node um, at this point you could disable from right here and it's about to move everything back around again um, was it in um that was the um how do we route mode there was a a fast key for doing this and i just don't remember what it was so if you want to clean it up and make it look pretty um could actually come in here at this point and set movement mode for a character movement so at this point we can grab that and we would need to make some room and put it in here so let me let's move everything out of the way because we don't want our character just wandering around aimlessly so I'm just gonna move everything out of the way for right now Oh, 
Oh, shut up. Go away. I mean, I'll move everything back over again in just a few moments. So, drop that in here. Just to run it in line. When you drop this in by default, set movement mode is going to, to default to none. So what you need to do at that, that point is now that you've got that in there, sorry, just had to clean that up just a wee bit. You need to undo that. Because if you just left that where it is now, you're setting your movement mode to none. And once you teleport, it's um to the far point. Yeah, I can't move. And unexpected results. <laughs> Don't know why it chose to teleport halfway through. The other thing I noticed is you'd probably want to put this onto the trigger. So that um, this part is actually somewhere else. You want to have a delay first. Um, so I can just put a slight. Well, see, if you put the delay in here, it's going to keep stacking delays, and you don't want to do that. So I would probably put that in at the time of doing the sound. <laughs> you always get some weird effects going on. So now that all this movement stuff that I just did, let me just move everything back. And actually do it from right here. So at one and a half seconds, you haven't teleported yet. So at one and a half seconds, we can actually put that in here. Bring this down a little bit. And from our character here, let's, um, what is the frickin' hotkey for that? I cannot remember the frickin' hotkey for, um, adding a reroute node. But let's just grab down here, set movement mode. So we can put it here. We'll have to look at why it's deciding to um, change the teleport location at that point. Then after you, you've teleported, you teleport and you get two seconds, you teleport and then I would say run a delay here. So after you have teleported, you want to go ahead and run delay. And let's grab one of these. I'm trying to do things now to actually continue to clean up the way my blueprints look. Alright, so set movement mode to walking. So let's put about a one second timer in there. And then figure out why it's decided it was going to um, so now well, we need to change that time. Okay, that's weird. Why is it doing that? Damn it, Unreal Engine 4. <sighs> Why do you have to be such a pain in the ass, Unreal Engine? I mean, seriously. Why is it shifting to the center point for that just that brief moment whenever I tell it to disable the movement?
and that timing is a little bit off for the character movement. So, could always just add another pin here and go directly to that. Break that node. And you know what? I'm just going to stack you here. So after that third node, um, we still need a delay in here as well. Okay, yeah, you're going to the right one. I just brain was shutting down there. So one and a half seconds, let's put this at, now let's put it at one. So a second after we walk into it, it's going to, we don't need to do anything here. This just terminates. And this actually can terminate too. Um, Yeah, I, I so don't care right now. <laughs> Trying to be neat about everything. So, at one second, it locks your movement. At one and a half seconds, it plays the sound. And at two seconds, it actually does the teleport itself. I don't get that. Um... A quick fix to that would be going into the defaults and here where I've got it set to 300 we put this at 350 that's gonna help with the default but we didn't have having to do this as well to get our teleport destination where we're actually going to we would then have to basically do this, break vector, make vector, and add to the Z, and add 50 on top. So, um, break vector, break that line completely, and we don't need you at all, so, break vector, and we need to make vector. You would think that it would be at the bottom like it was before. Make vector. That plugs in there. Y goes straight across and we're going to do a plus or a float plus float and we're going to change that to 50 and that's just going to give us that little bit of extra elevation there in theory this should pick me up it should be like 62 but we'll see yeah so we need to go a little higher um Put it at 65. That'll probably be pretty close. No, nope. hell, we still gotta go more. Um, You know what? 400 here, and we'll change this to 100. That's just to get rid of that little stupid quirk. So, boom. All right, very, very minor. It was like maybe five off. 
See, he just drops down just a hair. So, um... You always want to be good. You don't want to be close enough. So we'll just put that at 95. And we'll put this at 395. Well, that's the joy of, of doing this kind of stuff. Is working through the issues. Because, you know, when everything works perfectly, why would you want that to happen? And still a little bit of a minor bobble, but... There we go. So it locks you in place just that little bit of time so that you can't sit there and, uh, and run out. So we probably need to uh, lock the movement around. People are always going to try to to do dumb shit and try to get out. Uh, I got out. Well, um, so you can juggle around the, the timer based off of the delay for locking the player in place. Um, the average player... See, I don't like that now. <sighs> it's at 50 above. But when we're using those platforms... You know what? Um, it was only a problem with the um, the other thing with those little platforms so instead of actually fixing it universally if it's not broke don't fix it so if I do above it's broken on the platform but is it broken on going to the rooftop it is by a little bit. But you can always fix that because you are putting the teleport location in right here so you can actually make changes to it. So with this one being default, let's see what happens. Alright, so it's going up by 300 is all it's doing. If you change this number it's gonna, yeah. Had to go and make things complicated. Well, are there any questions in general about this? a four to five second delay on everything so but you can make adjustments in this as needed you're not really going to be that much of a concern with this one right here since we did change the location we could actually come back over here and change this up by 100 so we could just put 1100 and she it's like 1112 I think for the um, UE4 character so there we go that's all you gotta do to change the location you're, you're pretty sure you're not gonna leave it at the default location and if you do, then, well, you just kind of have to deal with it. Uh, so spawn is fine. It's off by just like 12. Going to above. Since it's a problem here, we need to go up by 112. So we can click on this one. The teleport destination is 500. Let's do 612. It could probably even go down to just six 
610 and just make your adjustments as you need to so that it looks right delightful actually probably take that back down to 600 still off by just like a small amount and being OCD is a good thing on some things because if you don't fix the little things players are going to notice it and you know players are always going to complain gamers suck I know because I am one and if you give them the ability to do something wrong they're going to do it so yeah, just minor tweaks. So if that if that does happen and you get this issue, just raise it up by 90 on your actual destination. And it only seems to be working doing that on there. So 250, want to raise it up? Um, you could, but in theory, when I'm on ground level that's the bottom of the capsule collision of the character and we're, we're teleporting the actor which is going to take into account the um, the capsule collision so that midpoint to me tells me that's actually the half height of the player so I don't know why it's doing that but by being able to, to adjust this on the fly then it's not really that big of a deal so this is 350 um, it'll be 340 on the Z. But that's the good thing about building the uh, teleport system this this way. Is see, fix. You have the the capability of telling it where to go. So if you have the, the teleport issue where it, it teleports you halfway through the ground, just raise it up by. 90 and you're good and there's much rejoicing it makes it simple instead of having to, to recreate everything inside here um, it is nice to have the um, the block on the movement mode um, because and that's one of those things you need to adjust the timing on that one a little bit more too So you could actually change that delay to, I don't know, half second, so 0.5. So when the, the player first walks into it, there's no way of directly canceling it. So they go in, uh, they won't be able to get all the way out before they teleport. <laughs> oh, I almost got out. It locks my movement, so I can't really go anywhere else. Once I walk in, I've committed to doing the teleport. So... Cool. And the fact that I put this on the wrong freaking project, all the work that I did into setting this up, creating the custom um, static mesh for for doing that, um, so with the teleport, this is actually um, hand built. It's not perfect. No, no, the version that I had was perfect. But I was having a Tinder moment. Yes, I was on Tinder. And chatting with a lovely young lady. And I, for some reason, whenever I was combining the BSP geometries, I accidentally had uh, that one selected also. So whenever I actually did this and deleted everything, and me and my save, I saving, 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 save frequently, uh, once you save your map, uh, there is no um, going back. So I actually created a teleport booth perfectly. It looked nice. Everything was lined up. These poles were lined up nice and neat. And it was this and this combined. So whenever I saved it, it had the freaking floor attached to it. And I saved the map so I couldn't undo Control-Z and go back to, to fix it. So I had to start from scratch. I had to make a whole new floor. I had to remake the entire static mesh and everything else. Oh. Memories make me feel fine. Sorry, um, not memories, but memories. 
I'm going to... Uh, that one needs to come up by about 20. Um, so that one... We'll do 320. Yay, much rejoicing. All right, any questions on it? Uh, essentially, uh, the sci-fi um, pack from Cinti's has a, a booth that will work out pretty good for teleporting. Um, I think also the Apocalypse pack has an old-school telephone booth. Um, look around and see if there's a TARDIS in any of the uh, Cinti asset packs. I don't think there is. You know, the British phone booth? I think that'd be kind of cool to use for a teleporter. By default, it is... It needs to come up by 20. So, when creating the default, I'm just going to add 20 in here. And that should, in theory, fix it. So that means I don't have to worry about changing the default. I do need to change th this one back to 300. So when you go to... Why, you suck. No, I do have to change that one by, by 20. So the defaults are going to be fine. So that one did need to retain that 20 because it's teleporting from this booth to the roof of this booth. That's all it's doing. Yay. Yay. Much rejoicing. Yay. And once it's made, you can put it in any map whatsoever. It's um, just to kind of showcase. Also, let's, let's check one other thing here. Uh, their world settings I have set for third person. Since I have this in the wrong project, let's see what happens if we go into Blueprint Survival Game Mode. Yep, we got our HUD, our stats. Yep, it don't matter what you're using. As long as you're a character, it's going to work. So if you're using the Survival Game Kit, you can drop this into um, Survival Game Kit, and it works. But of course, if this were going to be a map that was going to work with um, Survival Game Kit, there's a couple other things that have to be added in there. I'll put this back as third person. Save the map, and let's go to Fresh Map. I'm not worried about lighting on a freaking test map or a build map. So, nice, plain, empty grassland. But this one is set to use the um, Survival Game Kit. Oh. So, to get the Survival Game Kit to work, then you've got to add those two things there into the map. But if I want to add the teleporter in, I've already got it in my gadgets folder. Teleporter booth. And... It works. You could have it teleport you to the other side of the map. Um, one of the things that I love doing with um, shooter games is... Yeah, okay, this one is going to be... you know, a shooter. So if I want to put weapons in, that kind of stuff, I can. Um, it's also a survival game kit, so, you, you know, you can have harvesting and building and that kind of stuff. But, that's... I love doing maps where it's fast-paced, fun action. I like small maps where, you know, there's the, um, the launch pads where you're running around and it throws you up into the air. 
um, teleporters. You run over to another location, and boom, you teleport, and you're gone. Where, where the hell did he go? He was just right there, you know, okay? Or, no, that little ass is going to run to the teleporter, so you got to shoot him with a rocket launcher before he gets to the teleporter. Or, you know, I like fun style combat. I don't really necessarily care for realistic combat and for, you know, like the survival games and the battle royales and crap like that. They just don't interest me all that much. I like fun, fast-paced games that can be frustrating at times. For anybody old enough to remember the classic Duke Nukem 3D and the um, the different weapons, you had like a freeze ray. I mean, come on, how fun was the frickin' freeze ray? Um, I mean, that was just... You go in there with the, the freeze ray and you're trying to get away from somebody or someone's trying to get away from you and um, you um, zap them with that freeze ray, run over to them and just kick them and they, they shatter into a thousand pieces. So, um, what I'm working on with um, the Survival Game Kit is fixing their save game system for multiplayer environment. Um, I don't like the way it's currently working, so I'm going to be changing it around a little bit. and Hit the wrong key again, why don't you? Just go ahead, hit the wrong damn key. Should have put some stone in here. Really fun little system. Um, I've got the build demo, which is just building only, but the survival game kit is actually, um, yeah, see, save just worked just then. Oh no. I'm out of resources. So, um, yeah, take that. Um, details. Let's change that to a thousand wood. See, save game worked. So, come over here, pick up more woods. And let's leave that one open. Those from stars. I do like it. it. I mean, it's. I have played that stupid demo that I put together for the uh, the player build system. I probably got several hours in playing just that, just goofing off, I'd be on the phone talking to somebody, and I'd go in there and just load up the demo that I put together for it. So right now, the save timer is set for one minute. Uh, adjust the save timer. Uh, let's actually put down a door. Let's put down some... Nope. Um, let's put some shutters on the windows. Let's go inside. Probably wasn't wise to put um, a window right there in the stairwell. Um, was it the hammer that you have to use in Survival Game Kit for upgrading the, uh, the stuff? Yay, much rejoicing. And you can open them up. Now, another thing that I've noticed is I'll open up these three here, so we'll see whenever the save game happens. You see... Also, I picked that up. Okay, there's the save. Um, there's 750 wood in that stack. And, of course, I left that just hovering. So, if we exit and then go back in and play again, the spawns are not working as intended. See, that's back to 1,000 wood again. And it does not save the state of windows and doors. So, if I leave this door open, 
and wait for the game to save, and then I come back in, the door will be closed again. So it doesn't save the states of them. Not a big deal. But if you're building a combat system into your game, and well, I mean, you, this has combat system in it. Um, uh, survival game kit. Yeah, see, I shouldn't have put the teleporter in here, but I'm going to leave it in here for now. And I put starter content in and the Infinity Blade effects. So that's a lot of extra file space that I probably need to get rid of. Um, it's just unnecessary. So I'll, I'll probably go ahead and take it out of here. Blueprints, items, world items. There we go. So let's put down some stone. Um, it's iron bar, campfire, raw meat, metal bed, eh, stone. So let's grab this and change the count. So it's going to be a thousand stone in there. Um, yes, I haven't gone in and edited the guns yet because, um, and it bugs the shit out of me that that's a Beretta M9, or M92, or just, you know, whatever. It's a Beretta 9mm M9. It's not a freaking 1911. Get your shit straight, Diffuse. Um, so yeah, we could actually, um, actually put in here... Um, got stone, there's going to be a thousand in that bag. Uh, water, you can set up where you can walk into a lake, and it um, allows you to... Um, drink from the lake. Uh, shotgun shells, rifles. So, yeah, we'll just grab a rifle. We'll grab a silencer. Um, red dot scope. And 5.56 ammo. Let's grab two boxes of that. So now if I hit play, and poof, everything is there. Grab the riffle, silencer, red dot scope, ammo. So now if I grab the rifle uh, that I just picked up, it's empty. Well, I picked up two boxes of shells. Why can't I freaking reload? Because you have to go into your inventory, and you have to open the boxes of ammo. And... The only stack on 30. I'm going to take the sight, drop it on top of the gun, silencer, drop it on top of the gun, and now it's on there. Oh, got to reload. Semi automatic. Wow, look at that water drop. Damn. Hit the B key. Full auto. Yes, destructible meshes. Uh oh, reload. Um, let's see here. That's three shot burst mode. Let's hit B, the cycle between the, the fire modes. Uh oh, I'm out of ammo. Shit. So, um, use axe. For chopping down things as well. Uh, control C, Control V. Let's double up the ammo. And then some. You got a hammer for repairs, pickaxe for mining, um, put trees in, harvest trees. If you guys want me to do a, a video on this survival game kit, I will. Um, I'm gonna grab a bottle of water, throw that in here. Change that to five. That way when I pick up one, I'm picking up five. And even though it says soup on here, it says beans inside the other thing. So I'm gonna change that to five as well. Control C, Control V. So hit play, 
reloads everything. View for first person view. Ham looks a little bit on the wonky side. Don't like the stack size. So um, there is ways of editing this. I can change that stack size to 10 million if I wanted to. Um, I'll pick up water bottles and the cans of beans. Even though it said soup somewhere else. And we'll put uh, beans and water. Now if we hit the three key, it drinks some water. Four key, eats cans of beans. Oh, change my fire rate. So if someone's building a nice lovely base, you can go over and wreck their shit by shooting it up. Yes, I could use an axe or something. More satisfying. Wow. Um... There we go. <laughs> Oh, I gotta love Apex de Destruction. Already got a backpack. Let's grab some stone. Um, let's just see something here. Let's grab the blueprints. And I think you gotta have the hammer. Um, pickaxe. Hammer. Ah, it's like nothing ever happened. Um, more stone. Yeah. So with the uh, Q key out. What? Okay. So you can actually upgrade the uh, the stuff from wood to stone if you've got enough stone. It tells you the the resources. Um, takes five stone to do the upgrade. Nope, I never did do the shutters. But you can do this and actually demolish something. And if you do upgrade it, um, it does... It shows a repair icon as well. So if it's damaged, you can repair it. So I'll just upgrade. There we go. Um... So I didn't catch this one in before, but if you do the these as well, just cool stuff, you know. It's not a bad asset pack. It, it takes some getting used to 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 muddle through some of it. There's a lot of little bugs that tend to annoy me. So let's go back to. 5Q upgrade. Bring out the blueprint. Yeah, I don't like the idea of having to have the blueprint out to be able to construct. Um, you can't upgrade the doors and the shutters, but I'm kind of okay with that. But, I mean, anybody with a, a riffle. A few shots and you know, the door's done. Um, I have noticed also the plot pole definitely has some issues with it. So, if you've got this, avoid using the plot pole for right now. And the sound attenuations and sounds, if I put a suppressor on my rifle, I want it to make less noise. Same thing if I put the silencer on the pistol, I want it to make less noise. Uh -oh. Didn't upgrade you. I am 
probably not for a while going to put out anything demo-wise with this project in it because I still, you know, don't know what I'm going to do with this project. I don't know if I'm going to do anything with it at all, um, you know, for myself. You know, I've got other people that I'm helping with this project, but... Um, I don't know if I'll do anything with it myself. So let's just go ahead and save all this. Um, as you're playing around and you don't like the fact that you, you're your save game, you can actually go over here to the save game BP inventory save system and delete save. It'll say save deleted. So you go back in there, there's all your hard work and effort is gone. Just delete the save file. All right, ladies and gems, we are at the hour mark. I am going to eat something. And I'm going to have to come back in here and get rid of that. Uh, I'm going to keep starter content in here, but I'm going to get rid of the Infinity Blade effects because it's not necessary. And my beautiful teleporter booth, I'm uh, probably going to have to get rid of it too. Um just because it's unnecessary and doesn't add anything to what I'm doing with this project and I don't need these at all that's my sound attenuation sound cue and the sound wave itself so I'll delete all this stuff and I'll delete this but I'll probably do it outside of the editor so it will be easier to work with um, maps um, that was on the build map. I'll leave the build map, but <sighs> you threw you. You were fun. Bye. <laughs> oh, it sucks to make something and spend a little bit of time getting it functional and working perfect and and doing everything that you need and then realizing oh that's not what I need so audio effects don't need you three bye bye oh, I probably should have deleted the uh, telephone booth first because it was still linked in there and it's gonna break the blueprint oh no it's gonna be a broken blueprint Yeah, and it is dangerous. Force delete will obliterate my time and effort. Um, yeah, so gadgets, delete. That sucks. All that work, all that effort, and just pff, get rid of it. Hell, I I've done projects during a stream and. As soon as the stream is over with, I'll just go right in here and delete, you know, delete it right from, from here. Um, but yeah, Infinity Blades, uh, Village, and all the Infinity Blade stuff is free. Um, that's kind of cool. Was thinking about other asset packs, but you know, I, I need to quit worrying about adding other asset packs in. That's one thing that I, I, I try to strongly point out to people that um, don't get carried away throwing assets into a project until you get it functional. Get it to work and do what you need it to do. Infinity Blades effects. Delete. And sometimes deleting it this way just does not work. I hated putting some starter content in here uh, because I'm going to be packaging this project and sending it back to the owner of this project so that he has the updated versions of. Uh, and then we'll be able to do some other cool stuff, and I'll talk with that gentleman later um, about that. So this is going to take a bit to, to delete and get rid of don't usually do it inside the program as you see it takes a whole lot longer than if you close the project delete the folders externally and then open the project back up it works a lot faster 
the person with I'll get with him later on that. Um, had a tender moment earlier, so I'm going to get back to my tender moment. Um, not going to be up until 6 o'clock in the morning again. Somebody. Not that I wasted five hours um, almost uh, <clears throat> doing something and doing it wrong and, and trying to get it to work and then turn right around and redo it and took, what, 15 minutes to do it a different way, and it worked. See, it's still taking all this time to delete. Because it's having to go through all the freaking blueprints in the entire um, project. References for any of the items that are in here. And there's hundreds of items in there. So, instead of doing it this way, it would have been so much faster to actually... I hate notifications. Don't DM me while I'm in a freaking video. Um, but you go into um, File Explorer. Go to your project and delete it from inside here. And it's a lot faster. So we'll wait five minutes probably for the scene to delete um, by doing it inside the, um, the editor itself. So, yeah, all, all the, the hard work of this video and just shoveled into the garbage. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to go ahead and finish doing this on my own time. I'm going to make you guys here and watch me wait for the, the trash to empty. Um, get back to what I was doing here. Oh, now you're doing something. Uh, if you have any questions, Discord channel's there. I don't read comments in the videos other than while I'm streaming. So if you have any comments or questions, the link for my Discord channel is in the video description of every video that I make. Uh, just hit the show more and click on the link and that's an invite for you to join directly to my discord server so if you're not already a member get your butt over there and, and ask questions there and if you're a member of my discord channel and you have um, other rank besides the normal public ranks like I don't know on the dev team or anything like that don't freaking DM me I will stab you in the gonads not mentioning any names to somebody who sent me a DM while I'm live streaming who's supposed to be on my my internal team. I'll kick him in his gonads later. <laughs> Alright guys and gals, we'll see you. Catch me on Discord. If you want to see more of the survival game kit stuff, let me know. Otherwise, I'm just going to do